So today um, I'm going to try and build this. Uh, so this is a uh, replacement CPU card for an MSI 8080. It's designed uh, by a gentleman from Toronto called Josh uh, Benson. Who um, um, there's a story about how he built this as a replacement CPU card to help uh, diagnose an uh, an MSI 8080 that he was trying to repair. But the nice thing is that it's a single board computer, so it has the uh, CPU 8080A. Um, actually, I have that on order because you can't buy them new these days, so I have it uh, coming from eBay. Um, it has uh, 64k uh, of RAM in two 32k modules. Uh, it has a ROM. Uh, that Josh uh, kindly sent me as well, and um, serial ports, uh, parallel ports, um, so it's basically everything you need. Um, it's designed to fit in an S100 bus computer, and um, um, as I'm going to build it as a single board computer, that's not going to. I'm not going to do that today. I would like to put it finally into a case, but I'm going to do it in the single board mode and then uh, revert the single board stuff so it can fit into a real case. Um, you really want to have the, the front panel with all the, the paddle switches, that's the cool thing about the MSI. So, um, or one of the cool things about it. So I'm going to try and build this. This um, There's thousands of solder joints, it's actually probably one of the most detailed um, single board computers that I've built. Um, I ordered all the parts for this uh, on DigiKey. And they sent me this enormous bag uh, of lots of other bags, which contain all the parts. So um, uh, I have you know, sockets. I'm going to have to sort this into piles uh, and then start putting it together. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll get going. That's a socket. That's the ROM. Look there. So this is the uh, EEPROM that Josh sent me. So uh, that's going to come in really handy.
here we are. I've uh, finished uh, largely uh, building uh, this uh, MSI 8080 uh, replica. Um, I got all the parts, I soldered all of uh, the, uh, the pieces together. Um, before I put in the 8080A chip and this um, clock, uh, uh, clock generator, uh, which is these two guys go together, um, I checked um, all of the, the, the ground uh, and, and power voltages through, through all the chips. Everything seemed to check out. One thing I didn't notice when I was making it is I had the wrong chip here. Uh, that's supposed to be, what is it supposed to be? 74LS04, which I think is a NOT gate. And I had a 74LS02 there, uh, which is a NAND. And I think because of that, I blew up one of these chips. Uh, this is the um, 8250 replacement, uh, which uh, um, these you, you can still get these from, um, from DigiKey. Um, and they're much faster than the original 8250s, but they're really expensive in this in this form. I think I read seventeen dollars each. Anyway, I think I've blown this one up, but luckily I don't need two. I just need one. Uh, I have ordered another one, um, but I'm kind of I don't want to put it in just yet because uh, it works fine. Um, I'm only using one serial port, uh, which is for my USB to serial. Um, I put a little header on the board so I could easily connect uh, a USB serial adapter to the board. I've put uh, on the CF card, I've, um, you have to have less than uh, a one uh, gig uh, compact flash card so you can do a FAT16 format on it. Uh, so I managed to do that, uh, plugged everything together and um, seems to be working all right. So let me, uh, let me show it to you. Oh, uh, so look, I'll just start a terminal window here. I'm going to use the home, homebrew color scheme seems appropriate for uh, this. So it's just, this computer here is just waiting for um, me to power up. Uh, one thing I, uh, to note is um, I'm using a uh, ATX power supply and I'm um, powering it through this little header here that I, uh, I put on the board. This means I can use plus five, plus 12 and minus 12 uh, voltage rails. And I have the, um, I have soldered all of the regulators onto the board. Uh, but I've bypassed them because the board's expecting like 8 and 16 volts rather than 5 and 12 volts. Uh, so I've bypassed them, there's just little jumpers on the back. And this means I can use an ATX power supply. I'm using this uh, pretty cool little, uh, what's called a Pico PSU. Uh, you'll see here, it's, it's actually, uh, uh, the connector is actually the power supply. And these are designed for automotive applications where you want to put a, um, um, an ATX board into a car and they cost about $40, so a little bit cheaper than a uh, full-size ATX power supply, but these are good, uh, I think this is 160 watts, um, uh, and works a treat. Uh, so anyway, this is just a little breakout board for the ATX power supply, and it's uh, you power it with a 12 volt uh, power brick. So I've got a, I don't know what's that, it's like a six, uh, six amp 12 volt power brick. And I just hit this button and it should come to life. So there you can see uh, the, the, uh, the ROM message, Josh Benson version 2.5. The uh, compact flashlights flashing happily there. Uh, it's just loading uh, the, uh, the BIOS and I can tell it to boot into CPM. And there you go, MNCPM. So um, really fun to make this. Um, it's all ready for me to put it inside an actual MSI uh, 8080, but I, uh, I have to build the rest of it to do that. But uh, this is a good first step. The other nice thing is because you have, uh, there's so many uh, repositories for CPM software that are still available. Uh, you can get lots of, uh, lots, lots of the old games that used to work on uh, these CPM machines and basic and so forth is all available. So, um, Pretty cool, working and uh, was really good fun to make. Thanks for watching.